We have uh, a couple of years ago convinced the UK, the UK Joint Health Claim Initiative, to allow a health claim related to old beta glucan. That was only for UK. Then we thought, well, if it's for UK, good, it should be good for all Europe. Uh, uh, but uh, not everybody had the same view. Huh? And uh, uh, still, we have 27 member states. We then decided uh, that we should start to better understand the uh, health claim regulation, which I can tell you is a rather complex story. Uh, the regulation on nutrition and health claim was introduced uh, in 2006, and only the recent month, I believe, probably including experts in your area, they realized it becomes more and more reality because we see risk managers in UK, risk managers elsewhere, they start to uh, apply, uh, uh, reject the claims or support the claims. The regulation on nutrition health claim had actually uh, the following targets. Basically, it's not for us as an industry, but it's to protect consumers. So ensure consumers are not misled is probably the most important. But it should also be an incentive for industry uh, to come up with innovation. And I think we are going to see some uh, talks later on today uh, that uh, uh, tries to really use that part of the regulation. And then, of course, the last one, we should have harmonized rules for all European countries and we should have more or less the same conditions of use that would probably make our life much easier. The EU regulation actually classifies claims into, on the very left, you see the group one, what we call nutrition claims. Then we have the group two, that's what we call the generally accepted uh, uh, scientific evidence. And then the um, group three, which is uh, based on lately new developed science, or you can protect some of the science as an organization. That's called Article 13.5. And then the one I'm going to talk about is the reduction of a disease risk. That's what we call Article 14 claims. And uh, there were already some information given earlier on sterols. Uh, that's the only one until recently that had really an Article 14 claim uh, uh, related to cholesterol. And uh, I'm going to uh, uh, give you some information what we did to uh, get a similar approval. Maybe just one more time, we have seen and heard that before, but that's the way ESSA defines a reduction of a, a disease claim. A reduction of a disease risk claim refers to a health claim that states, suggests, or implies that the consumption of a food category, a food or one of its constituent, significantly reduces the risk factor in the development of a human disease. Actually, when we put together the science to support convince EFSA that oat beta glucan is not only good for British people but for all Europeans. We took that concept and uh, what we had to do here is we had to show that an increased consumption of oat beta glucan in a food actually works as Tom just presented. We need to understand this rather well and we had to show that a specific, a specific amount is needed, the three grams a day. We had to show that the product, once it is added to a food item and processed, still uh, remains to be active. We, of course, needed to better understand, is there a, a biomarker? Yes, there is a biomarker. But we also had to show, and that has um, been a, a very, very demanding uh, exercise, is there a cause-effect relationship? established between the consumption of old beta glucan type of foods and an LDL reduction. And um, it took us a lot of time, four years, to put all this together until we will see, uh, finally, EFSA came to a conclusion that there is indeed uh, 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 such evidence. But that's a little bit the way any redu reduction claim has to go, whatever, I mean, if a company, if, a, if, if, if scientists, if universities have an interest to better understand how we can actually communicate the benefit, that's the way to go for everybody for a disease re risk claim. There is no other way, but you have to show all this. Once this is done, I mean, we have submitted 45 studies, three meta-analyses, several reviews, a lot of technical and uh, application information, 
Once that was um, done, uh, the panel started to review all this. They came back and asked questions. You had to answer these questions. Uh, finally, uh, last December, a scientific opinion uh, was uh, issued and published by uh, EFSA uh, saying, yes, uh, we agree that there is such a cause-effect relationship. They also made it very clear uh, that the um, functionality is relevant. So that's all in the responsibility of the manufacturers to take care of that functionality, both for cholesterol reduction, but also for postprandial glycemic response. There we received an Article 13 point. A claim based on submitted uh, evidence has to be intact. Once EFSA has issued an opinion, then it goes on. Then industry, public members, experts, academics, they're allowed to make comments to that opinion. Everybody can agree, disagree. It's a lot of uh, discussions. Uh, in our particular case, we proposed to have slightly different conditions of use than in the United States. In the United States, they say it needs to be 0.75 gram beta glucan per serving. Our evidence we reviewed and the studies we did, including what Tom just presented, did not support that concept for serving a day. It just didn't. And ESA asked us to give rationals what the conditions of use should be. And then we could show very nicely, I'm not going into that, that would go far too long today, that one gram consumed three times a day or three grams consumed once a day would actually uh, support uh, the evidence presented. So that's the very first claim worldwide for all Europeans stating that one gram per serving is required, not 0.75. So that's just something we should know. If you are healthcare professionals, it's slightly different than what we have seen in the past, which I believe is good for the ones that uh, will consume this type of uh, food in the future. What we should say here is we often tend to forget as an industry and uh, risk managers, they of course know that we have another article, that's the Article 5 in the regulation, uh, that clearly defines what the condition should be. The use of a health claim shall only be permitted if the substance of which the claim is made is in a form that is available to be used to the body. That's a little bit what Tom presented. Very important. Article 5 1D says also, that's also law, that the quantity of the product can be reasonably consumed. So if you see bread providing one gram beta glucan in 500 grams, that's of course ridiculous. There, uh, actually, EFSA is going to help us uh, and the European Commission and the risk managers and the national authorities to clean that up. Uh, that's in our interest as an industry. It's in our interest to uh, really uh, support the benefit scientifically well supported. What actually does it mean for um, uh, uh, industries? What does it mean for healthcare professionals? Claims will really allow for a very strong supported communication. It's harmonized. It will be a claim for all Europe. That's the biggest one single market, more than 500 million people. Uh, it will be possible to have an active recommendation for these particular benefits. And we believe it will also help uh, to lead to new product and innovation. We have an interest. Consumers are not misled. So claims must be supported with credible, scientifically rigorous evidence. And we also know consumers seek simple, true, clear messages. Consumers don't have the time to uh, process and understand complicated messages. And also important, if you talk about Europe, if you translate what I'm just saying here, that's my mother tongue, into French, it will sound very different to lower cholesterol. And it will be different for somebody in the Czech Republic, and it will be different for somebody in Finland. So we always have to remember that, that a message like this is different from one country to another, but it's still the same type of thing, and uh, you uh, nutritionists and other people being into a daily life recommending food, we always have to remember that also if you talk to people from different countries, uh, this is relevant.